folks on the internet asked me to talk about this song Dream Free from my latest record so just gonna get into it really quick the song is rooted in my my deep love for the minor 7 flat 5 chord uh, and if you want to step over the piano with me I'll uh, explain that a little bit more alright I'm gonna do a little theory ramble Those are the first three chords, uh, A minor 7, C sharp minor 7 flat 5, to G major 7. And uh, I guess there's a little rabbit hole to go down about the 2 5 1 and how the half diminished is really kind of like a tritone substitution for the 5 chord. It's just a more interesting, dominant thing, bringing you back home. It's all right. But uh, I don't know if you. That's kind of that's fine lingo. But if you just look at the chord for what it is, uh, to me it's just a seven chord. It's an A seven. from G, it's an A dominant 7, which makes it, you know, a bit of a lift from the diatonic minor 7, I mean minor 2, to dominant 2, right? Uh, 2 dominant is like a lovely chord used all over the place. Ravel. Right? Um, it's also in pop music. It's a beautiful chord, the two dominant. And if you think about a half diminished seven as a dominant chord, it's a lot easier to play over. That's it. That's, uh, that's why I like it. Okay, now that you understand that chord and its relationship to my life and the world, that's basically the gist of this song. I mean, uh, uh, then it's just the rhythm section. So, the rhythm section, that feel is really just coming from my rhythm king, which is uh, early drum machine. It has pre-programmed patterns that you can latch buttons in and make multiple combinations and I usually <clears throat> send it through a delay and then I put it on tape and then I very speed it down to kind of get a weird swingy thing like this. This is just like the <clears throat> the sound I was going for on on this record was 
basically really rooted in the feel of this drum machine. And it informed like the bass part that I wrote. I mean, I guess after the after the Rhythm King, it was probably just like guitar chords. So I'll add those in. This part comes in, and I obsessed over this part for sure. There's a figure I like to outline that, that second chord, the minor seven flat five, with this uh, descending kind of hoppy bass movement. That guy. Um, <clears throat> in my head, when I was playing that bass line, I was listening to a lot of Brazilian music at the time. I always listen to a lot of Brazilian music. Uh, but I was kind of hearing a cuica. So I'll show you later. There, there is a cuica loop that comes in. Um, I wish I could play the cuica, but. It just works so well with the bass. That's the, the gist of the track. And then I just uh, had a dear friend, Sean Mullins, um, record drums at home because it was the kind of the height of the pandemic. And, you know, we're all staying home. Uh, so Sean just sent me these drums he recorded in his apartment. They sound amazing. I mean the the whole like swing feel. He he just nailed it in, with the hi hat and locking in with the rhythm king. It's like this unaccountable like lilty thing that he totally just found, um, and it's amazing playing. And uh, some <coughs> some of you have asked me to explain like uh, my drum recording techniques, which I, I love recording drums. It's like one of my favorite things to do with my time. Cause you can, you know, there's so many different combinations and, but really when you zoom out, it's it just, it doesn't matter, nothing. It, it's all, it all comes down to the player. And like Sean just recorded this in his apartment in Ditmas Park. And I did a little bit of mixing on it, but really just, subtle EQ and a little compression, but not much. So, uh, said it before, we'll say it again, tone is in the hands, my friends. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Use whatever you got. The only other things left to talk about, Hannah's amazing vocal performance. I mean, a lot of you also ask about my vocal chain, and I would <clears throat> say the same thing. Doesn't take much. I mean, what do I have? I have no plugins on on Hannah's voice. I just have a deesser and a, a a compressor, a deesser, and and a an EQ. But they're all Fab Filter plugins. They're not even like Vibe like emulation things. They're just normal plugins. <laughs> Last little bits, like I love uh, I love the DX7 flute patch. It's featured all over the place here. Here's this little descending, falling dream figure that. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I love that sound. Beautiful. Keeps climbing, I think. Now it goes back down. I use that sound a lot. I used it for the solo at the end, which 
It was just, I feel that sound and it's part of me. It's like a lot of shade was thrown around on the old Steely Dan lately, but that sound, uh, it just kind of goes there for me, especially goes goes to like Donald Fagan, Nightfly. Like that's, I, 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 I hear that in there. Anyway, uh, lots to learn from Steely Dan. The other little elements are just, uh, let's see, I did double her. with this weird, it's a slide with the electro harmonics talk box pedal. So it's kind of like a talk box. Uh, and then I did that with the chords too. Just kind of like mouths, random words into the, oh yeah. All right. um, I obsessed over this rhythm part. It's like a, classic Motown kind of guitar part. And it's all about the right hand and finding that swing. And not overdoing it. Um, and then my friend Jake Sherman is an amazing player and he just kind of threw down the chords on the roads. Just kind of played through it. Jake is a beautiful player. And that's uh, Dream Free. Thanks for listening. <laughs>